This is Scott from Cloak. Hey, this is Billy from Cloak, and you're listening to Phantasm Podcast. All right. Phantasm. Dr. Vincent West, Phantasm Podcast, and I'm here today with Scott and Bill from Cloak. And, and Corey Gork. Well, Corey's always here with me. Hi. It's a, it's a given. <laughs> but <laughs> Guys from uh, Cloak, this is awesome. Yeah, how are you guys doing? Good. Excellent. Hey, Thank you good. for doing this. And uh, your latest album, Season of Mist, Divinimus Depths, and that's available now. Yep. It's been available for a while, so if you Cloak fans don't have that record, then please please go buy it. Yep. It's been out for long enough, you know. And uh, we'll just get right into this. Uh, Scott, um, <clears throat> talk a little bit about how the, the band's inception for everyone listening out there. Uh, me and Sean, the drummer, started getting ideas together around um, late 2013, and we wanted to do something a bit different i guess than our peers around us at the time and right. something that had sort of a strong um package behind it and uh we it was a lot different when we first started it was more kind of raw death metal um style stuff in the vein of early mormon angel or bastard priest or something like that nice. Fuck yeah. and um so we did that for a while had a couple guys in and out at first um and this was a very early early kind of formation of cloak and then we kind of scrapped that and then started jamming with max who i met through a mutual friend okay. and we kept doing that for a little bit and then sean had a second kid so we kind of stopped for a while and i um i went on to do a band called haunting for a little bit and i was still playing in a band called paradox at the time and so time went by and i guess sean had hit me back up and something happened to where he he joined us in haunting and um i moved to just vocals and the drummer at the time moved to second guitar okay And then that just wasn't working out after a bit. I don't think we even played a show with Sean other, other than like a, this actually like two years ago, we did some like little reunion show or something with the, with the, with the band that put out just a demo reunion. It's kind of funny, but, um, so we did, we did that for a little bit, uh, wasn't working out. And then we were just like, fuck it. Let's just, let's just get back the club project that we had. And so it was really just on a whim. Like it, it kind of, you know before we had we i don't even think we had full songs other than a couple demoed ideas with max so we we got i called max back up he's excited to do it and we got um matt scott who played in living decay to play bass um who had actually jammed with us briefly in 2013 so our the real inception of cloak to me is early 2015 so okay in that short amount of time i think we've come a pretty long pretty long ways and uh you know three plus years however long it's been and awesome yeah so the the basic idea behind the band was to do something that had um 
the, the like I said, the full package behind it, the the image was very, uh, I don't want to say planned out from the start, but it the concept was there from the start of what we wanted to do. We we talked we talked about it and we had a plan of what we wanted to do and you know we put out pictures before the demo so people could see it and then we put out the demo before a show so people can hear it and then we did a show that was very well promoted so that people got to see the live package and then it just kind of took off from there it it we got signed rather quickly um i don't even think a year after our first show we had right we had gotten that uh We'd gotten that record deal with Season of Mist, or maybe it was, no, it was less than a year after the the first EP came out, which was on uh, a local Atlanta label. So yeah, we're still moving along, and then, um, yeah, I guess we are where we are now with uh, Billy, who joined the band um, about four months ago on bass. And it's to me, it's stronger than ever. We're getting ready for our second album and to do a bunch of summer shows. Uh, we're playing Psycho Vegas Fest, and awesome. yeah, it's oh, that's great. Really well, now <clears throat> just to kind of talk to you about this. Um, so, when you're, I, I'm really curious what you think of this. Corey and I've <clears throat> we've recorded really when we started uh, doing interviews and everything else. We were doing it right out of Masquerade. I mean, just every fucking thing that we could get down there that we wanted. And um, I'm curious for you. Uh, living in Atlanta and when you were putting Cloak together, um, <clears throat> cause you will definitely stand out from the other stuff that's, that I know of down there. So, um, what was that right. like trying to sculpting your own thing for that? I mean, that, that had to, uh, been... yeah, it was sort I mean, it wasn't really weird for us because all of our personalities were kind of already, we kind of had that like rebellious spark inside of us anyways so we didn't we didn't give a fuck we just wanted to do (laughs) what we wanted to do and we knew and i think that was half the reason that it took off the the way it did because we did stand out right and we you know it's we don't have blast beats every five every five seconds in our songs and (laughs) there's there's a groove to it and people can remember it and we look different and i don't know it, it just came like sounds cliche but it did come natural just to do to do it the way we did it um and it was a little yeah i mean at first it was sort of weird i, I think people didn't really know what to expect and i think people probably still don't really get it but they you know the people that don't get it weren't really meant to get it in the first place <laughs> sure um but yeah i mean it like i said it's just we kind of just had this vision for it from the start and we, we knew that it was going to be misunderstood by, by a group of people, but also like really, um, well liked by the other group, by another group of people. So I mean, it's great. I mean, you know, worked out for us. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's all, it's excellent. And, uh, you want to talk about a little bit about maybe some, uh, some of your first touring with, uh, after the record was dropped. Yeah, we did a small East Coast tour, five days up to New York was the farthest we went, and then back. It was good. Um, the record release show in Atlanta was really good as well. Awesome. And after that, we did a tour around Blood of the Wolf Fest, and then up to the Northeast to do some dates with Mayhem and Incantation. And those were awesome. the best shows we've played so far. Those are really, really good. Um we opened it was first of three and there was the reception of it was very good for us that's great yeah that's 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 all we've done so far um hopefully more i mean i'm very very eager to get on the road with this record it's it's always hard with a first record i i think the natural progression of how bands start to tour it's always on that second or third record they pick up steam um i'm sure we'll get a little more under under this one but i I think after that second one, it's hopefully going to pick up a bit. Sure. Oh, that's great. We just, we, we, we're not the type of band that just goes out and like, I've done bands in the past that are very DIY tours, just whenever, you know, wherever. But for this band, I feel we're trying to be a bit smarter about our, uh, quote unquote business decisions. And I think we, we're just we're not gonna pick like we've been offered to do tours that would have happened if we said yes and they just weren't really 
the type of stuff we wanted to do. So we we kind of wait for the right opportunities, I think and we that's seek right. out we seek out opportunities ourselves too. Like if we see something, we'll we'll talk to who we need to talk to to right. try to get on them and stuff like that. But awesome. Um, right now, yeah, it's just a fucking waiting game. Is how <laughs> a lot of the music industry is, I guess. Yeah, sure. Well, mayhem. I mean, that's a that's pretty stout to put on your resume. Yeah, that was out really with. really good. Our label helped out with that one, so we're Excellent. definitely thankful for those shows. Yeah, and Incantation. You know, they're both uh, pretty heavy hitters. Uh, yeah, to get, it's a mixed really bunch good. too. You know, not everybody yeah, that likes Incantation like death, likes pure mayhem. death metal. Yeah, yeah, pure death metal classic classic black metal and then whatever we are in between so it's really really good yeah it's good that's a good variety you know i don't really yeah particularly like 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 it when they're putting so much different genres in one bill especially they're all just different i mean it's good for like festivals and stuff sure but like as far as tours you get the general package you know that kind of uh lineup is actually you know it it all works and it flows into the next band yeah you know so yeah variety that makes sense it's always good yeah and then, um, I just want to talk about uh, my friend Bill, how Bill joined your band. Oh, Bill. I was so happy to hear that for him. And He's a great guy. I've known him for a little while, haven't I, Bill? I've known him for, it's been a minute. Bill? Yeah, we, <laughs> sorry, say that again? Oh, I was, try- I was trying to talk to Bill. I don't know if he didn't hear me, but Bill, are you there? Is Bill here? Hey, sorry. I'm uh, uh you're cutting out on these. Uh uh I'm catching like the first word. What about right now? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear that. Okay, cool. I was just asking Scott um how you came to uh be in uh, Cloak. Uh it was yeah. it's kind of weird actually. I um I briefly met Billy at a show that we played opening up for Bolzer and Nice, that's a good one. I don't, yeah, and I don't know. He just stood out like the way he looked. He, he, I'm sure he gets this all the time, but he looked like Lemmy, and I was like, "Who is this guy? I've never seen this guy." <laughs> like he's like, he's like six five, and like just I don't know. And I, I was like, "This guy needs to be in our band." And <laughs> we had we had been having. I'm. Ser- it sounds ridiculous, but I'm serious. But I'm. We were having. Um, issues with our with our bass player for a while and um whatever nothing crazy it just it just didn't work out right, and sure. uh and you know um really thankful for all the stuff he did with us but it just simply didn't work out so after that tour i remember reaching out to uh or no this was a little before that man tour i re- reached out to a mutual friend that i i uh that i know who knew billy and i was I was like, who, hey, who was that guy you introduced me to? And and he didn't remember his name. Like, he, he was like, oh, what's his name? What's his name? Because he was probably, like, drinking or something at night. I was like, well, if you if you remember, just get back to me in the morning. So And, and he did. And he's like, oh, hey, I remember that dude's name. It's Billy Robinson. So I, like, looked him up on Facebook. And his first fucking picture is him playing guitar. So I was like, perfect and i <laughs> and i kind of sat Boom. on it for a while and i talked to sean and max about it and i was like i was like yeah i don't, I don't know and then one night after practice we we just had a rough practice with just stuff that was going on and we're like dude I, let's just message him right now so so we did and he seemed excited and um and it's been great from there i i think he brings a ton to this band he's a really good musician and he kind of already had fit just, I don't know, the, the image of the band. And, just by looking like Lemmy, you know. Yeah. And being I mean, a bass a player. Guitar. You know, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a good guitar player. Too, yes, he so. is. I mean, we, we were talking about it the other day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, guys. That's awesome. So, um... Yeah, I mean, I was, just, I was excited say, if, to do it. I was stoked when Scott hit me up, so... I was thrilled. I remember seeing you, and when you told me, I was like, "That's fucking awesome." Um, I was really happy for you, and you know that bridged the thing here, and that's why we're sitting here. You know, it's really cool because I was just happy to hear that. I don't think that's ever happened with me, like knowing any of my friends that actually 
you know, landed in a band and stuff that was doing things and was interesting and that's really cool. So, um, so for both of you, uh, let everybody out there know everything you got coming up that you can talk about. What, what do we have coming up as a band? Yeah. You know, shows and just anything you want to talk about. Um, Saturday, actually this Saturday, the 27th of July, we're playing a lo- first local show with Billy at the Drunken Unicorn. Nice. And that's with our good friends, Rotting Kingdom. They're uh, sort of like a 90s new metal band in the vein of Paradise Lost or My Dying Bride. Cool. Sweet. And they're from, yeah, really, really good. They're from Lexington, Kentucky, and then um, some local black metal or a local black metal band, Malefic, is opening up. I've known their main guy, Devin, for a long time. So it's a good bill. It's a three-band bill, which I love. I don't really like shows with four bands. I don't know. It just doesn't flow as much to me. I like that, like, short and sweet. People don't people don't leave during the fourth band and stuff like that. Right. Or people don't leave during the last band. But, yeah, it's, it's going to be really good. We have kind of a new stage production going on, and, it's all very DIY still, but we do it uh, the best we can with how we can how we can uh, do it all just with the members. And I mean, we make all of our stage props and everything like that and our banners. So oh, it's yeah. still a very DIY band. Um, so we have that, and then we have uh, what's after that? We have Psycho Vegas Fest. It's gonna in be nuts. August. Yeah, yeah, it'll be awesome. And <clears throat> um, gonna hit up that pool. From there, we're going to San Diego to play a one-off show with um, uh, Church of Misery uh, from nice. Japan. Yeah, that's cool. And Spirit Adrift, and that'll be in um, at Brick by Brick in San Diego. And nice. then after that, in September, we have Shadow Woods Fest, which is sort of like um, it's like a you camp all weekend and it's a three-day festival and we're just playing this saturday and we have a show on the way up and the way back down it's looking like raleigh on the way up and charlotte north carolina on the way down cool um yeah and then we have some stuff in october where uh, we're opening for tribulation here in atlanta so nice. and then we have other various shows uh in athens that we're trying to work out now so cool <clears throat> somewhat somewhat busy in the in you know the regional uh area that's great and we're working on a music video that we just shot this past week too i've been editing it all day so awesome. that should be out hopefully before hopefully within the next two weeks before vegas excellent which song was that for yeah. for beyond the veil nice and we uh, yeah we we work with um one of my oldest friends who takes of all takes all of our pictures and shot our last video and I edit it, so it's again very DIY, but it sure. to me looks very good. Cool. Well, everyone, be on the lookout for, for, look for that. Beyond the veil. Yeah, it's yeah. Coming. And we did a video for the for the hunger back in we right. released it when the album came out. So there's that floating around as well. Cool. Awesome. And Bill tells me you're a huge horror fan. Oh yeah. Well, we can get into all things horror now. They have a song called Deep Red on To Venomous Death. Is that because you like the movie? No, it's not related, um, but I did like the title. I will say that Cloak has nothing to do with, like, uh, the the topics of the songs have sure. nothing to do with, with horror movies. But right. the, the imagery and maybe the artwork and just the way we want to present our... Uh, maybe our stage show and our music videos is definitely inspired by the horror and the gothic feel. Sick. Nice. Yeah, I think we're both big big fans of that uh, of that as well. I mean, I've, I, I spend much of my time watching horror movies <laughs> probably yeah. too much. <laughs> so that was another thing that we had in common when Billy joined is he was a big horror guy too, which was awesome. I think we were sitting at my, at my table and I was like, is that a Devil Rides Out tattoo? And Nice. That was, <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, no one's ever known. Was, no one's ever I was noticed." Amazed that he knew what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody has ever known what that was. Yeah. that's my favorite what Hammer movie. Movie. Period. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, and then awesome. we got in a conversation about how Glenn Danzig has that original Baphomet mask 
uh, he owns it and he used it in the am i demon video it's crazy that's crazy and it's just like sitting it was sitting on like above his mantle on his fireplace <laughs> i think it showed it and so he's like it was he was being interviewed in in some old interview and he he showed that and i think that's what made me look up that movie originally no he's gonna so, be at psycho vegas right I, dancing yeah oh yeah that's he's crazy. playing all of all the third album which is to me elusive the, huge the, kind of the no well, that's too um, no it's how the gods kill yeah yeah, yeah yeah to me that's the pinnacle of, of he did lose a huge like last tour or something yeah and now he's on three it's pretty sick you guys should totally uh say what's up to him no oh, i want to try i mean he's one of my idols for sure i mean i would nerd out with yeah absolutely we had uh, speaking of <clears throat> we had Eri Vaughn on uh, a few months ago and that was fucking awesome i talked to him for like two oh really hour. yeah it's like a two-hour interview you should check it out oh that's awesome yeah, yeah i love the book he put out with um all the photos he did that's uh-huh. what he was the, promoting uh, i think wasn't it the, well no he wasn't really sick. promoting yeah, he was just Xerox drunk era. talking to me on the phone but <laughs> it was not really i mean i've kind of become friends with him like he's just he's a really interesting guy he's a hell of a photographer though but you know not an artist yeah but I, I never knew, and if you guys didn't know this, I, Bill, I may have told you this, but when I did that interview, but I never knew that the first Danzig record was supposed to be another Sam Hain record. Oh yeah, if you if you hear if you listen to Final Descent, which was the last Sam Hain album that yep. came out after the band had broken up, it was something that Danzig mixed and kind of played drums on, and he just released it as a Sam Hain record, but. There's dancing songs on there. There's like an early version of Twist of Cain and Possession, I think. It's fucking amazing. And one other one. So yeah, it was that was that that was in the works. And then Rick Rubin got a hold of him and was like, Hey, we need to do we need to do this band, Danzig. Yeah. And then he kinda had them kick out everyone in, in Danzig and wanted to keep Erie Vaughn at least so that was kind of how Yuri Vaughn stuck because what? it would Rick Rubin just wanted to pull Danzig basically yeah. to form like a super rock group but Yuri was sitting there telling me when they were recording that record he'd never even touched a fucking bass before he's like I've moved them around like on stage but I'd never picked one of them played it and before before which record before the the Danzig record he had never played a bass no he was he was drums he was like Listen to the interview. It's crazy. It's very interesting. Huh. It's very yeah. interesting. Stuff I did not know. He's a he's an interesting cat. Like I said, I yeah. he, him talking about all that stuff, and then basically, I never knew that John and Chuck were just brought in basically by yeah, Def, yeah, Def yeah. Jam. I never knew any of that stuff. So yeah, Rick Rubin built the band basically. I mean, Danzig had a big say in it because they were friends. Um. But Erie played Erie played bass on the Sam Hain record, so I wonder if he meant before the Sam Hain stuff he didn't play bass. Well, I think he meant <clears throat> just the way he was having them play, like kind oh, of Sabbathy. Okay, okay. Like he he was like, I don't know what oh, the fuck yeah. you're talking about. Like I just <laughs> you know, it's way different. I'm not sure, but just listen to the interview. I know he was toasted when we did the interview. I love him to death, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not really sure. But you can listen to it. It's but yeah, it's yeah that rules. Yeah, I'm a huge, huge, huge uh, Danzig Legacy fan. Just all of his bands. I mean, I grew up on the Misfits, big time, and I'm a, just a massive fan of Sam Hain and Danzig. It's good stuff. I mean, I it's essential, especially the the horror appeal too. Well, know. yeah. Speaking of blending like <laughs> horror and music, I, they were the first band that I was like, whoa, you can you can bl-, like he's singing about shit that. I like in movies and you can blend this. So, I mean, that was a huge inspiration. Yeah. It's, I mean, I remember the loose, if huge record, I will not listen to in a car. I've been in three car accidents with that album playing. Holy fuck. Yeah. It's cursed. And never, <laughs> well, I mean, seriously, like I was never driving and like when the record dropped in 90, I remember we were driving. I, I wasn't driving. I was in the back of a Volkswagen rabbit that flipped like seven times. And the tapes, tapes still playing. Then I was in a car that got rear-ended with the CD playing in it. Like, I just don't listen to that record when I drive. I won't just not do it. But I, that's my favorite album. But I uh, Yeah, this feed is amazing. It's, that's crazy. Anything that's without... That it <laughs> well, you know what was funny? Three when you, car wreck. Yeah, it's, it's... I don't know. I think I'm just cursed. But anyway, but the uh, <laughs> if, you, if you listen to 
that interview with him, though, something that I never knew, like, because I was telling him basically, like, when him and John were done, like, I was, and, and Chuck were, I was done, you know, like, after the fourth record, like, I was, I was done. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And he's like, it was really funny, like, <clears throat> he got really weird about that, which I thought he would have been all about it, but I guess he, he really wasn't into talking about that, so we kind of ended that, talking anything about Glenn, like, this didn't happen in the interview, but everything else was, was very interesting, and you know we even talked about some misfit stuff, so that was kind of cool. But awesome, yeah. yeah. Check it out, see what you think of it. It's pretty cool. Let me know. It's kind of fun, but but yeah. So horror stuff. So uh, Scott, your first horror movie that you saw that you were like, "This is awesome." When you were a kid. Uh, well, Halloween for sure. Okay. I, mean, I remember. I remember being curled up on the couch, just being scared as shit of that movie. Okay. And I, <laughs> it's still to this day, it's my it's my favorite horror movie, and. W- it's the theme song. Like it's the scariest horror theme song in my opinion. Next, it's the coolest one next to Phantasm and Suspiria. Fuck but yeah! That is, it's the fucking creepiest. Those two themes, the simple piano playing that John Carpenter did. It's incredible, and just just I don't know everything about that. Those first two Halloweens, I love the second one too. Um, I mean, I, I I have a guilty pleasure. Me and Billy were talking about it the other. I, I love everything up to six, honestly. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I actually really like Six, and I, I don't even know why. <laughs> no, yeah, see, yeah, I mean, Paul Rudd's in it. Yeah. It's a good movie. Yeah, it is cool. Yeah, Paul Rudd. Yeah, yeah. It's I like so much fun. I love that movie. I like the character yeah. of Michael Myers, no matter what they do with it. You know, it's yeah. I think it's just a I cool mean, character. It it just scared the shit out of me, and I remember David, who actually who I was talking about earlier, filmed our videos and stuff. He was kind of into horror, like he would watch it with his friends. Like we were we were young, probably middle school or something. You know, I'd. I'd seen movies that I had an older brother. So, you know, I was born in 90. So when Scream came out, I was, you know, six. Right. And that was, so that came out and I was like, oh, whoa, what is this? And that's totally inspired by Halloween and all the, all the horror, uh, all the slashers. Um, but yeah, I mean, Halloween was the one that I was, that like vintage horror that I got into. And I was just like, wow, this is fucking crazy. And then from there, I, I just got obsessed. I mean, I have a, I have a Halloween tattoo on my arm. I, I love nice. that movie. Um, I'm a big John Carpenter fan, so. Oh yeah, just in general, The Fog is incredible. Oh yeah, he's he's my favorite. Um, but it's, you know, a lot of <clears throat> a lot of his stuff. Um, I don't know any anything anything really for me after In the Mouth of Madness. I don't like. Um, yeah, I actually haven't seen that one. I do um, like, that uh, movie's amazing. Do you like oh, Prince yeah, In the Mouth of Madness is one of my favorites. It's fucking awesome. I need to get that. Fucking yeah. Sutter Kane. I love, I love Prince of Darkness with... Uh, oh, it's so good. Uh, Alice Cooper. It's so good. It's <laughs> a great Pleasant. movie, man. That's a... That's a <laughs> and it basically, that, that movie's fun because it's essentially... He literally got done shooting Big Trouble in Little China and this carried several of his cast members over into Prince of Darkness. There's several. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it's fucking awesome. Cool because he did that in the fog too. He had. Um, oh yeah. Laurie Strode's friend mm-hmm. and, and and fucking or you know um, Jamie Lee Curtis. Yep, she's um, actually at the when they did that movie. She was married to Tommy Lee Wallace actually. Mm-hmm. So. Um, to who? To Tommy Lee Wallace that directed uh, Halloween Three. Um, oh, okay. Because he played on a bunch of. He's unaccredited, but him and Alan Holdsworth would, when they would record music, Tommy was usually sitting in with the band. But, um, but yeah, uh, if you if you look, um, and it's really funny, you should listen to it. We we interviewed Adrian Barbeau, and before we got off the phone with her, we were like, "What's a funny story you can tell us about when you were married to John?" And she was like, "And I'll just go ahead and tell you this pretty funny story. Corey can help me with this. So I'll paraphrase it here, but he would get he liked to get drunk because they they had bought a house. They loved that area where they shot." Uh, well, Halloween three was shot there later, yeah, but the where fog. the fog was shot in Northern California, I can't remember the name of the city. And uh, and they bought a house there, and John would stay up late at night and watch the Jerry Lee Lewis telethon and get drunk. And she would go to sleep, <laughs> and at like two thirty, two forty five in the morning, she walks in there. He has his hair and up in a towel, and he's like hiding. He's like down on his knees, like hiding near the couch, and he's like, "There's a fucking bat in here. Get it out of here." <laughs> and there was a bat like in the seat. It was really fucking funny. But um, 
But yeah, you got John crazy. Carpenter, and he's afraid of a little bat. It's amazing. Yeah. It was amazing to hear that dirt on him. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love I love those John Carpenter solo albums that he's been putting out too. Oh, they're, they're good. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. The that. Lost Theme stuff. It's it's yeah. it's interesting. Um, and on Halloween this year, he's going to be playing at the Palladium in uh, Los Angeles. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We that's, uh, that's awesome. Oh yeah. We actually have Goblin doing Suspiria here for Halloween. Really? Here in Atlanta. Yeah. Nice. You guys should come down. Yeah, they're playing the Earl. That's really cool. Holy shit, that's cool. That really is neat. Yeah, yeah, they've been taking that stuff, you know, all kinds of places. I think they did Dawn of the Dead, uh, yeah, last yeah, yeah. year or something. Now they're on the Suspiria stuff, which is great. I saw them do at Maryland Death Fest. They did uh, basically all the Giallo hits. They would yeah. screen them behind them, and he did, um, you know, Deep Red, um, Hell yeah. Suspiria. I think Tenebrae, and it's amazing. Um, yeah, I think all, now all they're doing the offshoot of Maryland Death Fest. They're doing like the Days of Darkness, and they're playing the Suspiria thing. I think. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. So they're gonna they're kind of torn around those. That's really cats cool too. So yeah, that's definitely something. The Corey that, last year went and saw, I guess, the remaster of Suspiria at this horror festival down in Florida, and oh, it looks so good. And I got the you know the Synapse Blu-ray, which I think it's the same cut. It's like the it's a little longer, but it's the the soundtrack really makes that movie. I don't if it wasn't for the soundtrack and the how vibrant it is, like the color. It probably, you know, yeah. it wouldn't be as effective, but the, the music no, really, like, makes that just, film. It's it like it what so I was scary. saying Halloween. Yeah, it was the music and um, for Suspiria, definitely the, the colors. And then for Halloween, it's more of like the drab colors. Like, it's very, very dark. Yeah, because uh, John made, like, stock music. I don't even know how you would do that, but, you know, <laughs> that theme is yeah. like stalker music, and, you know, you got. You know, yeah, the yeah. boogeyman creeping around, and it's like so affected by how they do that. You know, makes you feel uncomfortable. I, you know, yeah, and that movie to me is, I think, why I'll always have my favorite. Kind of, my soft spot is will always sort of be for American horror. You know, oh, like seventies, eighties. So, be, just because I, that's where I grew up, and I same grew here. Up in, <clears throat> yeah, like I. Grew I up in an, American suburb, you know, so it's like exactly. Halloween is an American suburban horror movie, and there's something about that, like Nightmare on Elm Street. It's oh yeah, there's something about that like suburban American feel that I can just relate to more than like say um, Argento films, which I love. But sure, I, I can just relate to something like a Carpenter or yeah, um, Same Wes here. Craven movie or fucking. We've all been to summer camp, so yeah, Friday definitely the Friday the Thirteenth <laughs> movies, <laughs> yeah. Just or the burning, that, you, know? you know. Um oh, yeah. I think yeah. for me, the reason I like Italian stuff, I don't like, I don't hold it to the American stuff. It's kind of a separate love, but uh, but you're you know, obsessed with. But it. But I'm from New York, and a lot of the Italian stuff takes place in New York City. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Suspiria, Especially they're the in like a New York stuff. dance school, and then you know, uh, yeah, and New York Ripper, New York Ripper, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the Beyond is in New York too. I don't remember. Um, yeah, I thought that was New Orleans. That's New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, but there's there's more. There's like maybe opera or um, I'm not yeah. sure if opera is supposed to be in Europe. A lot of those are supposed to take place in New York and all this stuff. So it's kind of you know it's cool. Yeah. So I guess that's where it comes from with me, like subconsciously. Oh yeah. But you know For I'm sure. also yeah it's a gore hound, so I like all the Italian gore <laughs> stuff. But as far as like yeah. a general horror movie and the vibe and the, the you know the the feel to it, obviously you know the American shit like a. Friday Thirteenth oh, yeah. and all that, all that good stuff. Phantasm. Yeah, Exorcist, of course. Yep, that's where I, that's where my uh, my shit started. Was that? Oh, cool. And Billy, what was your what was your first one? Oh man, um, it started with me like really young. So my, my dad would rent like old classic movies all the time, and. Um, like I think at the time I, I got really sick of just uh, having to watch black and white movies all, all the time. But then as I gr- got older, and uh, you know, older and wiser, I guess. I, well, maybe not wiser, but definitely older. Um, <laughs> I uh, I kind of started to look back and like realize how much I kind of just loved that stuff. Like I, I think now it's kind of part of me. So like yeah. early ones would have been like uh, a lot of the old Universal monster movies, of course, like uh, like Dracula, Bela Lugosi, that definitely had an impression on me. Nice. Um, uh, Frankenstein, you know, uh, Boris Karloff, uh, Lon Chaney, The Wolfman, um, yeah. 
all that kind of stuff. I, yeah, and then like uh, like Bride of Frankenstein, I think is one that always stands out to me because it's just so fucking weird. Like, yeah. I think like like to me, like it was, at least with all the other movies that I watch from that time period, that one stands out because it's just so bizarre. I don't know. To me, it seems that way, and it's just just got this atmosphere to it that is just so unsettling, uh, you know, and I guess especially for the time, you know. Um, but then uh, I kind of got into a lot of other stuff as I grew up. Like, uh, I got into a lot of the Hammer stuff as well. It's awesome. Um, I've always been a big fan of uh, uh, my, my top three guys, I think, are like Vincent Price, uh, Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing. It's the trifecta. Um, so all those, you know, dudes from that era, for sure. Yeah, um, right the Kings, man. There was one one Halloween night in particular. I remember um, I opted not to go trick or treating uh, with the other kids. I decided to stay home and watch movies with my dad nice. because um, he had better candy anyway. So, <laughs> 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 we're sitting there and I, I can't remember how old it was it must have been like 8 maybe I think it was I was like 7 or 8 that's a bold, and, bold um, move to not uh, go trick or treating when you're you're not going to get a sack you're just yeah I know I, I kind of just wanted to watch well he okay so he had uh, uh, it, was, it was House on Haunted Hill it was on oh, TV see. oh awesome and he was watching that and I was like well I kind of want to watch this because it's a scary movie and it's something that I probably wouldn't normally get to watch yeah and uh, and so I'm sitting there watching this movie and there's the one scene uh, where um, the lady is like by herself in this room, and then there's this skeleton that comes out and just kind of floats across the room. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And scares the shit out of her. <laughs> and then she falls into a big vat of acid. And I was just like, as a kid, seeing that, I was just like, holy shit, that is fucking terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, of course, like the 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 kicker was when when the, you see the guy, uh, I forget which character it is, but this guy comes out from like a curtain or something, and he's got the skeleton on these like pulleys and strings and stuff, and like so like seeing that and seeing how like evil that seemed to me, you know, like it was just like it, that made a big big impression on me as a kid, and then after, I was just totally hooked after that. That's good uh, yeah. Shit. But yeah, so like yeah, and then you know, I like all the Halloween stuff too. You know, I like the stuff that everyone else likes. Like I remember seeing The Shining uh, for the first time when I was in college. Oh yeah, I'm and I will never forget the first time I saw that movie. That uh, movie is fucked, man. <laughs> yeah, Vincent and I we went and okay. saw that in the uh, at the, the theater last year, and seeing that in the theater completely turned around what I thought of it initially because I love that movie. But seeing it in the oh, theater, yeah. and that's a very underrated score, also because yeah, the, the yeah. score oh, of that is, is they have the, uh, so the, immersive, the first, and it's like uh, it's creepy. The uh, the first scene is the the Dies Irae, the old death chant, but yeah. it was like updated and oh, like yeah. uh, electronic kind of like yeah, it's very uh, eerie. Yeah, that, it, that theme is just haunting. Yeah. Hearing it in a theater is nuts, and and you can really appreciate Stanley Kubrick's direction, you know, by seeing it on like a big screen. You know, you can really oh, yeah. oh, see what he yeah, was going think, for, and it's just yeah. total psychosis, you know. Yeah, that's it's awesome. such a beautiful movie. Just like, I mean, all of his movies are gorgeous and amazing to watch and a feast yeah. for the eyes, but that one in particular definitely stands out to me, and just because I'm such a horror fan, too, oh, I think, sure. like, I'll never, ever, ever get tired of that movie, you know, just put it on and I will watch it. <laughs> Same here, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it's, um, that's a good one, and that's one, like, like, you were saying with the seeing it on a big screen for sure. I, I think I saw that, and then I saw the Exorcist on a big screen here. Oh, shit. And oh, yeah. I mean that, it, yeah, it just makes it, it just makes it so much better. I actually saw it. We we have that Plaza Theater in Atlanta. It's the I think the oldest theater here. And nice. They they used to they used to have film. They would pull old film reels that they could find or buy or whatever, and they actually showed an original Halloween film reel and it was so beat up that it was it had this like orange hue to it so it kind of worked nice and yeah they it was it was pretty incredible to see that on its fucking original format you know? All right, now, we awesome. saw uh, that remastered uh, Phantasm too uh, oh Vince right Vince and I did yeah. that oh yeah uh, was really cool that's another amazing score you know makes the movie yeah oh yeah one of my favorites yeah. what a bizarre movie though like it, it 
that's another one that like the score makes it. It just gives it a great atmosphere. Yeah, that's but perfect. The, the, fucking, the plot is so crazy, but I I love that movie. I don't know why. It's so weird. You know? That's my favorite it's horror just, film for sure. Obviously, oh, uh, Phantasm. But, yeah, <laughs> but um, I don't know. It's just everything I love in one. It's just you know, it's such a strange film, but it's it's all effective. You know, I did like, that guy do any other? big horror movies that director no Don movie. Coscarelli he did Bubba Hotep uh, which isn't really oh, yeah, I guess Bubba it's a Hotep. horror film uh, he did the Beastmaster not a horror film but it's uh, something to definitely check out it's good it's like a yeah, Conan I mean, it's like a Conan this. knockoff it's really good it has uh, Mark, yeah. Mark Singer in it that was in the original V television show before ABC butt fucked it with the remake <laughs> and then uh yeah. Of course, that <clears throat> that John dies at the end, but I think that movie sucks. Corey likes it. I think it's a piece of shit. But I do like it. It's kind of cool. Um, it's Don. I like Don stuff. And then, of course, he didn't do the fifth installment of Phantasm, and it definitely shows that movie's kind of a turd. But the first it's four, it's the first four, I'll watch all day long. Yeah. I love those movies. Should but. watch five to kind of round it out. But it, it is yeah. a, a very different director wise. It's you know, um, it was yeah, weird too. Like he'd walk away from his good. baby doing that, but. Yeah, I will tell you something interesting though, Scott. Bill, you may get a kick out of this. I may have already told again. I can't remember if I've told Bill this or not. But when we had Reggie Bannister on last year, thanks to Corey, which was fucking amazing, and just gave the our Phantasm podcast this Phantasm seal of approval having him on. So he was talking to us. He and his wife, and his wife was uh, Gigi was very heavily involved in in Hollywood in the behind the scenes stuff, and she was telling us basically how Phantasm three was initially supposed to have Bruce Campbell in it as Ash. And she was saying what a douche he was. Like, he would not, he just would <laughs> not get on board with it. And they're like, well, you know, this is like literally right after Army of Darkness wraps. So it's like, do you want to come to this universal picture for us? It's Phantasm 3 and we're going to, and then we're going to call it something crazy. Like, I can't remember because, you know, Reggie's just the only, the only character in that film for the most part. And besides a tall man. And yeah. Then, so it, Ash was supposed to be in that, with, and I guess he could never, you know, come to terms with it or whatever. And then basically, they had to, in order for him to agree to do it, they would have to write the whole script around him. But they couldn't really get the character right in writing or something like that. Well, no, he didn't. She, he was saying that he didn't like what Don was. Don didn't have him in the film enough, and all this stuff, and it was just like, yeah, they had to write the film around him. I don't know. It's and I love. The Evil Dead stuff. I used to, in my youth, and this is yeah. around this is around ninety ninety one, eighty nine ninety ninety one. We used to go to Johnson City at the house and drop acid and get fucked up and eat mushrooms and the get cabin, loaded yeah. and yeah. So because my Wait, dad, the Evil Dead cabin. Yeah, it's in Johnson City, Tennessee. What's left of it? Oh, seriously? Yeah, all that's left yeah, is that's it's the, pretty much overgrown now. But all that's left due to vandals is like the chimney and then like some part of the porch. But it's they they tore so it down, which is terrible. Oh yeah, dude, eighty nine ninety. I used to go up there with my friends, and we would get fucked up. You know, I was a teenager, and we would get whoa, that's crazy. Totally fucked up there, and everything else. And what was cool about it was, um, you know, that so I, all that stuff's very special to me. But yeah, that's insane. But after doing that interview with Reggie, you know, and, and hearing how uncooperative he was about stuff, and then. Um, some other things. It was just it was kind of a letdown, you know, you hear people like that, you know, and yeah, that's to go back to John Carpenter, it's the reason I've never met John Carpenter because I, I really do like him. Like he's my favorite director, not even just horror director. He's just my favorite director, period. And I don't know that I want to meet him because, you know, I, I've, uh, we had, I did an interview with Jeremy from Broken Hope and he's obsessed with John Carpenter too. It's favorite director. And he's like, yeah, I wouldn't meet him. Like I met him and he was saying he was kind of crappy to him. And I'd meet him. I just, Jeremy, short. Jeremy spent like, a thousand bucks with him just signing thing the thing stuff and he was not cool and he was just telling me like basically don't do it and stuff so it's one i'm gonna probably shy away from i would do it that sucks it's john Carter. well it's you know it's i think sometimes you just don't you know. i did it with gene simmons i heard so much about that gene was so fucking cool so i think but i, I was short with him i was just kind of like hey i'm Corey," and i didn't say shit because the more you say uh, the I more mean, they're gonna act weird so you know people are just kind of be chill you know but I don't with, think. I here's think here's something cool. And you guys are Halloween fans. Um, they're doing that that Halloween forty convention in Pasadena. Um, oh, cool! And our buddy Sean Clark, he does a thing for the Scream Factory 
Blu-rays and stuff called Horrors Hollow Grounds where he goes to the locations. He's doing a fucking tour at that thing where he's going to... Either it's the day before the convention or it's like the day after, and you get to go to all the locations of those films. You get to go to the Myers house. You get to go, you know, to the, the Halloween 3 shit, like probably to that near that church where the fog was, like where that, pretty cool. uh, but that bar is where uh, Dr. Chalice goes. And, well, uh, no, all that's Northern California. There's no way it's that. It's just the first film. I don't know. Because yeah, full on. Awesome. maybe two, I'm not yeah. really sure where two was shot, but three was shot in Northern California. It's like a whole full And six day. was shot in like... It's like a full day tour thing. Utah, I think. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, there's some of it. I think it's the first film. I mean, because he did that on that, if you guys have seen that, I don't know if you have this yeah. or not, Scott, it's a... It was like the super limited like Halloween box that has all the Scream Factory put out with all the Blu-rays and stuff in it. But the the bonus features on it, what Corey's talking about, uh, Sean does that. Like he'll go to, he went to all the, like the film locations for like every film, and it's pretty interesting to see you know where they shot all that stuff and everything. But um, I think it's funny, and one of the reasons I have no interest in that new film was I just don't. I don't like that they're wanting me to forget about two, three, four, five, six. I just don't. I don't yeah, like that's that. a little bit weird. Well, and that, the company that's making it's kind of pretentious, and I'll see how I don't it know. plays it's, out. Really, it, Nick like, Castle is, is in it. Is like a yeah, I'm not a fan. <laughs> yeah. So what kind they, of uh, what's up? So what kind of newer films do you guys that you guys actually checked out that you liked horror films? Um, I think we both liked uh, Hereditary, right? I've heard a lot oh, about dude, that. Yeah, actually, Hereditary is, is the best one I've seen in in a long time. Actually, I yeah. was very impressed. I've heard great yeah, things that about was it. That's good. Um, I I kind of like I kind of like that first um, Insidious. And yeah, those films are cool. House, yeah. yeah, yeah, House of the Devils. Uh, I'm a big fan of, of that. Oh yeah, it, it, I like I mean, it has, West, but in general as like a current yeah. horror director. I think he's done some of the coolest stuff. Who? Yeah. Yeah. Who um, is it? Ty West. Oh yeah. Ty West. Mm-hmm. He did uh, yeah, House, House, the of, Devil is... House of the Devil. Okay. Yeah. It was I think he filmed it in whatever film they used in the late seventies, early eighties, so it, it literally has that feel to it. So I've always just, liked um Yeah, he nailed it too. It's, yeah, the same the same sort right of, of yeah. Oh yeah, it has the same pacing that those movies have and right. Nothing. Nothing big happens till the end. It's all one suspenseful build up. Nice. So that yeah, was. Yeah. That's a, that's definitely one to check out. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, it's it's hard these days. I yeah, there's so many. Not, of them. not a lot of. I like. I James actually like. You know. I actually like this movie called The Ritual that was on Netflix. It's done by an Atlanta guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that one was actually pretty good, man. I just watched that a few weeks ago. It was, yeah, it was cool. It was yeah. like. It was. Uh, Kind of, it could could have been very cheesy, but I think he pulled it off well. With right. um, I don't want to give too much away, but yeah, with with kind of yeah, the no, theme I definitely of it. liked the where it went because I, I was kind of worried. It was like, oh man, it's just gonna be like the same old yeah. bullshit. <laughs> oh no, no, cool. All right, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, the witch I wanted to like more. I just I couldn't do it, man. I tried. I, I didn't know what was going on with it, you know. Man, I love the I, soundtrack I like the and, and the feel. <laughs> I mean, I get I why do, people like it. I just couldn't. There wasn't. It wasn't doing anything. It's a little slow. I do yeah. like it, but I don't. I didn't love I it. I think the I whole time I was, gonna... I was trying to like, uh, I was jumping too ahead of what the movie was actually doing, and I was like, "Wait, what is what is happening?" You know, and then yeah, I don't know. It just didn't really catch me as yeah. much as I wanted. I wanted, to. I wanted to love it, but I just liked it. But I love the soundtrack, and yeah, that's really I good. actually. We sample, we do samples in between songs live, um, and awesome. I sample part. I sample part of the Witch soundtrack. So Sorry. I actually, I think I sampled House of the Devil on our old live shows too, and oh, on yeah. our first demo ever. Yeah, we did a little sample from that. We just take little like piano and cello bits and put them in between songs so they it's pretty sick. so it flows. Yeah, I like um, um, James Wan. I think he's really effective. You know, love. What those. has he done? Uh, he did the Saw films. He did. Uh, oh, cool! Yeah. Um, he did, I mean, that first Saw film, I want to say. Yeah, the and first, then, the first two, I think. Insidious, yeah, they did Insidious. Okay, he did okay, the. He yeah. does uh, the Conjuring. Oh, I didn't know that. They did the Conjuring yeah, I, films, I like, which are great. I I like that first Conjuring. Oh, um, so I know Billy's not a huge fan of it. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't know, man. I couldn't. Uh, did you like the uh, second one? I, maybe I need to go back and watch it again. I, I might. I wasn't a fan. Right. 
the yeah, well, I didn't like the second. I like the first. See, I'm a, obviously I love the Amityville shit in the beginning, and then you know, the, yeah, the, it was very um, very Amityville. I think uh, what was it those Ouija movies? Surprisingly, are pretty awesome. Uh, no, I, I saw seen any of those. They're really good. I, I didn't. I saw the, the Origin of Evil or whatever the second one. It's really good. Oh yeah, it's very yeah, retro, and it's just got a good feel to it. It's actually it's pretty tight. I enjoyed it. But not a lot of yeah. horror movies. It's kind of like you said. It's hard to no, find it's like ones. Everything yeah. comes out. Everything on everything comes out on Bloomhouse or A two four these know, days. I feel like. Um, and I it's heard, so hit or miss. Yeah, I heard Hereditary is great. Oh, did, did you guys like? Uh, did you guys like Get Out? How'd you guys oh yeah, that one? yeah, I like that one. I was surprised by it. The yeah, level that it, I did, did not like that. <clears throat> I was surprised by it. I didn't know what to expect, and the towards oh. the end was pretty pretty sick. Don't um, breathe yeah, is another yeah, pretty good thriller, like thriller horror. Did you couldn't guys do, do that? Couldn't do that one. Which one's not that one? Is really? that the one with the blind, nope, the blind not like deaf it. guy? Yes. Yeah. I, I Corey and I have made fun of that for... <laughs> I've never seen it, though. I've only... Oh, um, uh, yeah. What's the other one? A Quiet Place, I've heard, was good. Oh, yeah. That one was super good. I don't know how I forgot that. That was one of my favorite yeah, movies that one of was this a, year. That one was a big one, I've heard. It was pretty awesome. Um, yeah. And then the, the new great. It was actually good. I enjoyed it. Oh, dude, I really enjoyed the new it, and I really didn't think I would. I, I didn't either. I was like, into really it, really. Cool. I was really low uh, watching it, and I was like, no, this is yeah. actually kind of cool. That it's I beautiful. Just, I kind of went know. to see it on a whim, like, with a, with a buddy of mine up here, just, like, at the last second. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll go see it, whatever. <laughs> I got nothing else to do today. And then I was glued. It was so good. Like, I, yeah, it was. I, I really enjoyed that movie. Oh, yeah. I hate to say I, I was the opposite. I wanted to love it. I, I, I wasn't. I, I wasn't too into. It. I saw it twice in the theaters, and I did like it better the second time. Sure. I just have such high because I love that first it. So I, I yeah. just had high hopes. Um, I didn't hate it. I mean, the the scene, the rock fight scene with the Anthrax song made me want to like. <laughs> yeah, it. that's pretty cool. So, they're freaking cool. Oh yeah. But they, um, <laughs> me events are the same way though. The part two for. The old film is like the best part with the adults. I yeah, think. it's so fucking awesome. We're more looking forward to the sequel now. You know, the first one was pretty oh, yeah, good, I mean, but the second oh, yeah, one's going to be. You know. Do you know when that sequel is coming out? I totally um, forgot they got to sometime that next film. year. I think they're shooting oh, it now because okay. they had all the casting rounded out, so they should be about to film it, or they're currently filming. It's so. in pre-production. Pre-production. So Wait. it should be coming out, dropping sometime, probably the fall of next year. I'd imagine. They'll push it to. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. Around that time, I haven't maybe. seen a. I haven't seen a release date or even a projected release date from Warner Brothers. Yeah, so I think it's, I'm sure though. Sometime next year, you know, the, near the end. But that's going to be good. Um, as far as anything else, I mean, you know, it's not really much. Um, yeah, I don't really know the newer stuff coming out. It's kind of hard to. I almost have to dig it up, you know. Yeah. It kind of just hits there, but Her- Hereditary is one I definitely want to see. Um, yeah, see see that in a quiet place. Those are great. Okay, and then I know this isn't really a horror film, but they're they're trying to make it into one. Is that that Venom movie looks fucking badass? Which one? Venom, like the. Don't know, tell Bill that. Bill doesn't do comic book movies. No, no, he does not. <laughs> it, it's Venom, you know, like from yeah. Spider Man. Bill, it, that it is looks, not. Bill and I just had an in depth conversation about this. <laughs> yeah, but this one's. I'm not my, touching uh, that, Bill. Into, that was yeah, not me. Got into the comic <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, you're <laughs> yeah. It looks pretty. Uh, You're out. I'm stoked for that one, but I, yeah, I don't. A lot of the comic book movies that have come out, like, uh, yeah, I'm not into it. But I feel like that would be cool. Yeah, and a lot of them. I, like I, I do like some comic book movies. I got to make that that clarification. Like, I, I did like not know that. The uh, I like Superman the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like uh, what else do I like? I think yeah, the old I Batman's like. and stuff. <laughs> Bat- yeah, dude, the Tim yeah, Burton yeah, for sure. Yeah. You gotta like the Batman's. <laughs> At least yeah, the Tim Burton. Yeah, ones. the Tim Burton Batman. Actually, I really liked the Christopher Nolan version of Batman too, just because it didn't feel like a comic book. It felt like oh yeah, those like are great. It's more like action awesome films. Movie. Yeah, all those. Yeah, and I actually uh, like. So I, I guess I do like some things. <laughs> I'm a shithead yeah. that likes Batman and Robin. I know everyone hates that movie, but I I understand what they try to do. And you I were little it. when that movie came out. Yeah, but I was old enough to know better that it was sh- it was shit. But it's supposed to be like a wacky. Com, you know, it's supposed to be like a wacky comic book movie. It's not supposed to be like a serious dark movie. So it was a yeah, nice well, departure, and it's goofy as fuck, and it's so cheesy. But it's I liked Batman Forever. Like you that's know, my favorite that one. Out, but I think I was the right age. <laughs> yeah, me too. For that, so. that was my favorite one because of the 
you know, you got Tommy Lee Jones as Two Face, and you know, Jim Carrey as the Joe, oh, yeah, as yeah, a Riddler. You know, that's good. Yes, that's good yeah, stuff. A, I will. Uh, I'll always remember that one fondly. And Val Kilmer as Batman's pretty awesome too. So. <laughs> yeah, love him. <laughs> I love so. that second. I like Batman Returns probably the best. Is that the one with uh, uh, Danny, Danny, Danny DeVito? DeVito? Yeah. Oh Penguin. yeah, the Penguin. It's good stuff. You know, I'll be honest, I don't, and this is, I've read comics since I was six or seven years old. I've never liked a Batman they've cast. I've never liked any of the Batman movies, but I like really? the old Adam West show because I grew up with it in reruns. It's yeah. awful, but I love it. <laughs> like, I will watch that religiously. It's, it's trippy. But cartoons, like the newer cartoons that they do of Batman and stuff, I love those. But I like the oh, yeah, dude, I, grew up, I grew up with uh, the animated series. That They're about to put that out on Blu-ray, actually. I still think that show's pretty kick-ass. Oh, it's great. Yeah, yeah they, they released not too long ago the Blu-ray of uh, Mask of the Phantasm, which is such a good film. Um, you know, like oh, the 90s sure, yeah. Batman stuff. Yeah, it's good shit. Oh, cool. That's what yeah, I, I like the, the 90s Spider-Man and Batman and X-Men cartoons are all really good. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah, those X-Men cartoons are really good. Yeah, it's yeah. good animation. I mean, I grew up in the '90s, so I'm always going to say '90s cartoons were the best. But <laughs> you will hear '80s yeah. from me and '70s. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's all whatever you, whatever your wheelhouse is. Guys, yeah. thank you for doing this. We appreciate you coming on. And uh, yeah, thanks for having us. No, it's really cool to have you guys on. It's our first Atlanta band, so we got to nerd out. You know, uh, move into comic books near the end for Bill. So. Yeah, it's his nice. favorite. It's Bill's favorite. Thing. <laughs> yeah, it could have gone, could have gone on for a while there. <laughs> we, we got everything else out of the way before we bullshit it. You we know? somehow went on about Danzig for a little bit, which always happens with me. So it's totally fine. Hey, it's, yeah, we love that. <laughs> and you guys better uh, get some photos with him and oh yeah, buy him a drink, whatever you got. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's probably he's probably fucking flying out after he plays. I don't know, man. That pool looks pretty bitchy. You need to go. <laughs> have some drinkies. Hey, I was going to go back to his hotel room and eat some Wendy's. <laughs> I thought you were going to say eat some ladies. So I was like, Probably that too. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> you know, the funniest thing, I'll tell you a funny story about him before I let you go. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. You know, because Scott, if you're like me, because I'm a dancing fan as well, like it's, it was always annoying them showing that like ska band, that guy sucker punching him. Yeah. Yeah. I hated that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like it was like everywhere. And they're just like dancing, yeah, they're punching the food. Uh, yeah, I fucking hated that, right? It made me sick to my stomach. Well, I saw this live. I'll never forget, like, for the rest of my life, I'll never forget this. They were playing what was at the time Starwood Amphitheater in Nashville, and it was like a little Aussie tour. It was like, this was like 95, 96, something like that. And Danzig was the the direct support for him. And I'll never forget, I don't know what was going on down front because we were... We had we had seats, but we couldn't really see good in an amphitheater. And you're still kind of it's like flat and like kind of looking down, but sort of up. But anyway, but I'll never forget he like launched into the crowd while he was wearing like one of those gauntlets, and he was like wearing somebody the fuck out. And all I know is <laughs> they turned all the power off on Danzig, and that was it. Lights came he back fought, on about half an hour later. Do, do what now? He, he fought somebody in the crowd. Yes, he did. Damn. <laughs> and I never, it was the craziest thing. Like, I saw them get him out of the crowd, and then, like, all the power went out, like, on the stage, and that was it. Like, there was never, it was during the middle of a song, like, and that was it. And I never, you know, this is all pre really internet, you know, so I never knew what happened or what was going on. I probably had a camera. And this was that black acid wow, devil man. or whatever. That's what he was touring. So, but yeah. Damn. It was pretty crazy. And then that, somebody, that, uh, I <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd get a kick out of that. <laughs> But he was, I met him, I met him one time. I met him in, on the How the Gods Kill Tour, they were touring with Caius. And this was uh, Blues for the Red Sun, too. And um, met all those cats, and then Danzig was over there, and he was silent, and he was super nice. Like, I've always heard all these horror stories about him. He was really, really nice. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. And I, I used to love that... Um, that Black Aria thing? Oh, my God. I used oh, to yeah, just drive cool. around listening to that because that was like his intro music when I'd go see him. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's fucking crazy. amazing. It's fucking awesome. It is. It's fucking people, so good. The only reason he's a dick is because people fuck with him. 
I mean, if someone's going to fuck with you, I and, love him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I always love him. Me, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a dick to you too, man. Especially right. if they film it. It's like it's not funny. Don't fuck like, with our friends. Oh, I know. I hate. I hated that sucker punch video. That thing was like viral. I hated that goddamn thing. Like, and all my friends would yeah. send that to me. I'm like, whatever. Like, it's fucking stupid. But yeah, that's a true story. He literally launched off the stage onto somebody and started wailing on him. He was, and they had that like gauntlet thing on. Uh, <laughs> um, that went, rules. Yeah, it was great. It was great. And what was so, what was so wild about it was like they got him up off the stage, and then I have never seen this at a show. Uh, well, then one other time, and you can actually look this up, but Danzig wasn't there. But I'll tell you about that in just a sec before I let you go. But there was like all the power went down off the stage, and that was it. But the Ozfest in '97 in Columbus, Ohio, when Black Sabbath didn't play, there was a riot. Like, right after Pantera got done, there was a fucking riot. People were throwing fucking trash cans that were on fire. They were tearing up the fucking... This was at, like, their amphitheater there. And it was just... It was fucking crazy. I mean, I remember people fucking leaving. People were, like, pissed off and breaking shit. And, like, all the merch people and the, the people that worked there were putting street clothes on so nobody would, like, do anything to them. And I mean, I, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, that was fucking nuts. And that that was when OzFest was, like... Like, this was, I'm talking, this is like the first one. This was like, you know, Pantera and Typo Negative and Fear Factory and all, whatever was popular at that time. But we'd went there to, yeah. you know, just to go check things out. I went with a chick, but not really my scene. I was more into the death metal stuff. But anyway, but we went, I wanted to see Pantera again. That was fun. But, but yeah, I didn't expect them to be a goddamn riot when Black Sabbath didn't play. So I thought that was kind of funny. But yeah. But anyway, but look, thank you guys for doing this. Awesome. Bill, thank you, sir, for setting this up. It's awesome. Scott, hey. thank you for your time, sir. Uh, See you in Atlanta yeah, sometime. Thank you guys for having us. We appreciate it. And uh, all right, this is Scott from Cloak. Hey, this is Billy from Cloak, and you're listening to Phantasm Podcast. All right. <laughs> <laughs>